totally lucky on my part that they invented the internet right at the same time that I was trying to be a rapper. Um, cause it was just a way of promoting yourself when you're nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like it was a way of like getting your stuff out there when you ain't nothing, you know what I'm saying? That prior to that, man, fools really did have to like put in a lot more work to, to make it to where I was able to make it a lot easier, you know? And that's not to say I didn't put in a lot of work, but that's just, you gotta, you gotta call it for what it is. It's like pre-internet, there are so many fools that wanted to rap that were great rappers that never made it to being a rapper in front of people that gave up on rap and went and got jobs and families that if the internet had been around, these fools would have been heard. But there's so many unheard voices from back then, you know, it's like back, and it's crazy now. The one thing that I'll say that is, is kind of messed up about the internet's involvement, and you know, this is just, if I really do got to go on a tangent and pick some stuff, is that now there's just too many rappers because it's so easy to do. You know, it's like, I, there was a time when I could buy every record that came out and I did, you know, it's like every Tuesday I could go down there and I, and I could actually afford to buy every record that came out because there was only one or two records every Tuesday. It's like now there's so many rappers that it's, it's convoluted and it's kind of like when that happens, then suddenly cats like me get a chance to shine. <laughs> For me, it's a great thing, man. Nobody would have ever cared about me if, if they hadn't have gotten me for free. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad they cared because it gave me a chance to, to step out there and hopefully I can show and prove with what I step out there with to actually show that I do deserve to be out there. Like, this isn't totally on some self-deprecation, hate myself shit. It's like, like really though, it was lucky for me that we had a tool like that at our, at our hands. Now, we didn't really know how to use it as a tool. Um... Really, when it first happened, none of us did, man. I used to take these four-track songs and give them to this kid I knew um, named Adam. And then Ant used to take them and give them to this kid he knew named Shane. And they were two actual internet nerds at the time. And they would do this tape trading. And then suddenly it's like they'd send out some atmosphere to somebody and get some Project Blowed stuff back in the mail. Or they'd send out a tape out to New York and get this dude named Aesop Rock that nobody had ever heard of. You know, and it was like there was a lot of us that were like totally floating around amongst it but i didn't know how to do it at first like i didn't really discover email till like about four years ago finally but so at that by accident. it was totally by accident yeah yeah when, when the internet thing happened none of us over at rhyme Sayers really knew what to do with it you know sadiq was the first one to learn how to download like the cannabis diss song the ll you know what i mean but and even that we were slow you know what i mean and so it was like but but it was other kids that like liked what we were doing in our city you know, kids that would come to our shows that we would have in the city that had made friends with people in other areas. And, 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 and they were doing the same thing and they just started trading tapes around, man. You know, as fly as this is some, some shit that happened, man, I remember. And, 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 and in return, Adam used to bring me all the stuff he'd get too. So my collection blew up. You know what I'm saying? I was suddenly getting tapes from MCs and Portland, Maine and Eugene, Oregon and in places that I didn't know there was rappers and it was because I was giving my stuff to Adam he was trading it with people and then he'd always come back with the goods and, and let me dub it you know what I mean but then what's fresh is um, when Eminem before he before he before he blew up but right after like, all the battles and all the no notoriety you know when everybody was checking for him and he still had that Slim Shady EP that was kind of fresh and everybody was like oh okay um, when his record got bootlegged and, and sent around with these tape trading dudes, somebody out there got smart and put Music for Earthworms by Aesop Rock on the B side of the tape. And so everybody was trying to get the Eminem tape and it would accidentally get this dude that they never heard of on the other side called Aesop Rock. And so I remember at a, at a time when I was talking on phones with people and stuff, they were like, dude, who's this dude with this voice on the other side? And even I didn't really know who the dude was at the time. I just remember somebody said his name was Aesop Rock. And I was like, this dude is really fresh. It was like way before I ever got to meet him and stuff, you know? But like, that 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 is just like some amazing shit because it's like, there's that, that tape, that Eminem tape made it probably through like 20,000 people, I'm, I'm willing to bet. You know, and for and for one cat to be able to like get his stuff. Yeah, 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 flip it like that. That was really fresh. And I'm willing to bet he didn't even do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to bet Aesop didn't do it. I'm willing to bet it's one of these tape trader kids that just totally randomly was like, well, I like this dude too. I'm going to put it because it fits. And, yeah. Yeah. In a way, in a way it went, man. Like, yeah, that was flavor for your ear. Sucker. Sissy. Yeah. <laughs>